If you come down to the stage, you have to come with expectation. Expectation. Get excited about Jesus. You unravel me with a melody. Release. Oh. 
much better. Before you take your seats, we want to do a quick prayer. I'm going to have you guys bow your heads real quick before JJ comes out. We're going to do a quick prayer. Bow your heads. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this hour to be in your presence, to come and worship your name, to give back to you what you've given to us, which is gratitude, which is thankfulness, which is um, life, health, and strength. We are appreciative for it tonight. I pray that these students and all of the people that are gathered, gathered in this room, Lord, I pray that their hearts are ready to be filled with whatever you have for them tonight. I pray that whatever the word is, whatever comes out of JJ's mouth and whatever he has prepared, I pray that it penetrates the hearts of the people in the room so we will be forever changed and better. In Jesus' name, everyone say amen. amen. All right. doing that oh man hold on a second I was told that if Estrella was taking a picture I had to smile so hold on thank you Estrella that is so so good hey we're so excited that you're here let me just go ahead and say this real quick lean in lean in lean in lean in I am so thankful that each and every single week we have an opportunity to come here and to have the type of band we have here at Lenexa can you give it up for our worship team and, and, and not only that, but at our Speedway campus, Curtis, who is leading worship for us, we're so thankful that each and every single week that we can encounter God through singing. Because whether we realize this or not, everything that we do is worship. From the moment that we come into this place to the moment that we leave, to the moment that we lay our heads down, rise up, we're worshiping God. We get to express our worship through singing a song. So I hope and pray that we would not just take moments like this, gentlemen, and just like let them scoot on by. And that we'd actually honestly lean into what God wants to do in our hearts and our souls in worship. Because listen, worship isn't about us singing our favorite songs, it's about the connecting with God. In fact, our greatest worship song is your life back to God. That's what he says. So I'm excited you're here. We're week two relationship goals, where our goal is to help you win in relationships. That's what we said from the very get-go. We want you to win not only now in your relationships, but eventually later on down in life when you get married, that you would understand that those relationships matter as well. So last week we kicked off and we started talking about this idea of us aiming our relational arrows at God and at his target. Because here's the reality, we cannot win in relationships without God. And so when we shoot our relational arrow at God, what ends up happening is, is that we hit that target each and every single time. And what we get as a result is him. And he is the most satisfying thing in this world. In fact, what we said last week and the thing that you need to understand even going into this week is this, is that if God isn't enough, no person will ever be. I don't care who that person is. If God isn't enough for you in your life, then not a single person in this room or in this world is ever gonna satisfy you. They're gonna let you down. So I wanna encourage you to keep going after God. In fact, I just wanna celebrate something really cool because last week, and I know this is just through our texting service that we got, but we have 141 of you that are going through our daily devotions. We can give a God a round of applause for this. So keep going after him. Keep pursuing him. This week, I wanna to talk to you about something that honestly gets a bad rap. 
Um, but I think it's probably one of the most important things that we could talk about today. So tonight, I want to talk to you guys about singleness. And I want to talk to you about singleness because far too often, singleness is seen as this waiting period where life only begins once you get married. Did you catch that? Far too often, we view singleness as this waiting period where life only begins once we get married. So what I want to help us understand tonight is simply this, is that your marriage, and I'm not asking you to think about your marriage right now, but I want you to think about your singleness, that your marriage is only as good as your singleness. In fact, there's people that have relationship problems, and we probably could point those problems back to a singleness problem. And so we're going to talk about singleness. In fact, if I was there to say this, the encouragement for us tonight is simply this, is that our, your singleness is the most important part of the relationship process. Your singleness, where you're at right now, you're, you're not married, so I'm going to count you as single. You might be dating someone. That's okay. You're considered, I'm going to say single right now, is the most important part of the relationship process. And here's the reason why. Because in this process, you are learning how to be honest with yourself. You're learning about yourself. You're learning your weaknesses. You're learning your strengths. You're learning the purpose that God has for you. And so it is the most important part of the relationship process. Because here's what happens. We live in a world today that honestly tells you that you're not good enough unless you have someone in your life. And, and as you go on throughout your life, the longer and longer that you stay quote unquote single, you're not married, people are gonna look at you and, and ask the question like, oh my goodness, why is she single? She must be crazy. I mean, I'm being for real, and there's this pressure. But what I want us to see tonight is that singleness is actually a gift from God. It's actually a gift from God. In fact, um, Matthew chapter 22, Jesus one day is asked this, this important question and by a religious leader, and the religious leader comes to him, and this is what he says, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depends all the law and the prophets. So in, in essence, what Jesus is, he's summing up the entire Old Testament because the New Testament isn't in print yet. But when he gets to this moment, and I've heard this verse, and maybe you've heard these verses preached on before, and someone will say, hey, here's the synopsis of what Jesus is saying. He's saying to love God and to love others. And, and here's the deal. I'm not saying that those people are wrong, but I'm not saying that they're completely right either. Now, the first part of it is completely true, because what Jesus is reminding us in this moment is that we should love God above everything and anything in our lives. But not only should we love God, but we should learn to love ourselves. And see, there's the, there's the tension because, again, we've heard this, this taught. And if you haven't, that's okay. I'm gonna teach it to you right now. Because again, it says like, <laughs> love God, love your neighbor. But let me just go ahead and say this. You cannot love your neighbor unless you learn to love yourself. And when you learn to love yourself as a byproduct, what happens is, is that you end up loving your neighbor. The problem with that is that far too often we actually find ourselves looking at ourselves in the mirror and we don't really like what we see. Can we be real for a second? We don't really love ourselves that well. It's a disgusting thing. Sometimes we look at ourselves and we're like, man, I'm disgusted with the way I look. I'm disgusted with what I did yesterday or the day after that. I'm so upset with X, Y, Z about myself, and I don't really like myself. And so let me just go ahead and say this. It is impossible for you to love someone the way that God wants you to love them until you learn to love yourself the way that God loves you. So it's so important. So here's the question that I really want to dig in tonight. Because we sang a song, I am a child of God. Here's, here's the question. 
How can we learn how to love ourselves? And the answer to that question is simply this, is that you, you learn how to love yourselves when you begin to see yourself as Christ sees you. And, and can I tell you where this is found? Again, this is why I'm excited you're digging into God's word because what God says about you and how he sees you is found in his word. And this book is filled with 66 books, individual books, all one story, synopsis, all about Jesus Christ. It isn't about you. But in here, it starts telling us about who you are in Christ. It starts telling you how God sees you. And the more that you walk in that, the more you will begin to track it around the world. It's kind of like this. My, my daughter and I, a few, goodness gracious, it's it a couple years now, I went to a graduation. And I went to this graduation, and it just like starts pouring while we're in the graduation. And my wife's at home with Ella, and they're having a good time. Well, I get home, Ella's outside jumping in the puddles. And me being fun because I, I like to have fun. I was like, this is gonna be great. So I got up, I rolled my <laughs> pants up, and her and I just sit, and we went in the ditch, and we just started like doing this, jumping around in the puddles. It was so fun. And what was so amazing is this, is that when we got done playing out in the rain, my wife went inside. I did something that no husband should ever do. Just <laughs> help you out. Like, this is good notes for you, you gentlemen to take one of these days. You do not go inside when you are muddy. Because what happens is you track that mud all the way in your house, and then your wife is like, how in the world did this mud get in here? I'm like, it must have been Ella. It wasn't me. It was her. And you start blaming people. But my point is this, is that we tracked in the mud all around our house. And so when we learn to live in how God sees us each and every single day, we begin to track that around our world because we begin to believe it ourselves because we're living in it moment by moment, minute by minute. And so I'm just gonna show you, there's so many verses I could go to tonight. I'm gonna pick my absolute favorite verses to just kind of dig in and show you what it is. It's found in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. And this is what Peter says about us. He says, but you, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people once you had not received mercy, but you have received mercy. Now, here's what Peter is, in essence, doing. He is showing us what, who we are in Christ. He's talking about the newness. Now, let me take someone else, another name that starts with a P, Paul. Paul would tell us in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7, that for you and me, if we belong in Christ, we are a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. But what is that new that has come? Well, Peter's pointing it out here. And he's telling us in Christ, there's three things, there's three simple things that are new for us. And the first thing is this, is that in Christ, we have a new position. And he uses this, verse nine, go, I'm gonna go back to verse nine for a second. He says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. Now, I love this because I, I'm gonna dig into this text tonight. Sometimes we just need to dig in and sit into what the word of God says. He says, but you. Again, I'm gonna tell you who this applies to here tonight. If you're here and you belong to Christ, you have a relationship with him, he's talking about you because beforehand he's talking about people that don't belong to Christ. He's saying they're foolish and what happens as a result of them not following Jesus. So if you're here and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, I want you to lean into this because it might actually help you understand what Christ has to offer you to follow him. Because what he says is, is this, is that, but you are a chosen race. I love that word chosen. But what does it mean to be chosen? Let me just ask you a question. How many of you ever in your entire life at recess have ever played a game that required you to pick people on your team? Raise your hand, okay? All right, what happens in that moment? You got two captains that typically are picking people to come be on their team, and what they do is they line everyone else that wants to play dodgeball, Red Rover, red light, green light, whatever it is that you're playing out there, just imagine, go back to back in life, football, whatever it might be. And what you do is the captain will sit there and they'll have this lineup of people and they'll say, I picked Trent. 
Trent gets to be on my team. And then the next person will go and they'll say, oh man, I, I, I picked Gabe, because you can't put both of them on the team. And then we'll keep going and going and going. And what happens is it, you choose the people to be on your team. And this is what it means to be chosen. It means that what God has done for us, for us that belong in Christ, for us that have put our faith, our hope, and our trust into what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross through his death, burial, and resurrection, what it means for you is that God would say, if I lined up every single person in this entire world shoulder to shoulder, and I just had to, I only was only to pick one of you, what I would do is, is I would pick you to be on my team. And what's so amazing about God is, is that he does that for each and every single one of us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It means that God wants to choose each and every single one of you to be on his team, to be him. And here's what's amazing about that. God's not choosing some future version of yourself. He's choosing you right now where you're at, the struggles that you struggle with, the doubts, the anxiety, the fears, every single one of those things. God says, no, 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 I still choose you. And the great thing about it is that tomorrow morning when you wake up, God says, I still choose you. That's what it means to be chosen in Christ. And when you realize that the God of this universe who created all things chooses you, that changes how you see yourself. Because if you really believe that, it doesn't matter if the world chooses you or not because you are chosen by the one true God. And what are you chosen to be? Well, he goes on, he says, you're chosen to be a royal priesthood. Now, I need to go Old Testament on you guys for a second because you can't really understand what a royal priesthood is without understanding the Old Testament. And if you never read the Old Testament, you're kind of, man, the Old Testament's obsolete, like, nope, the vast majority of the <laughs> New Testament has so many, New Testament has a bunch of Old Testament references. Let me tell you what a priest in the Old Testament was. A priest was the only person who had access to God. They were the only one who would hear a word from God. They were the only one that actually could sacrifice to God on behalf of the people. So in Christ Jesus, what Peter is telling us today is, is that we are a royal priesthood, which means that we are adopted by God. You and I in Christ, we belong to him. We are sons and daughters. Let me take it a step further. You are a prince or a princess of God. You are royalty. And you have access to God and the greatest thing about that is that Tim Keller, who's an amazing pastor, one time he said this, and I'll never forget it. He said that the only person that dares to wake up a king at 2 a.m. for a cup of water is a child. And you and I have that type of access to God. That is such an amazing position that you and I have exchanged this fact that we are royalty, we are priests, that we can come before God. And that's why the writer of Hebrews would say, don't come timid to God, but come to God with boldness because you are a child of God. Not only are you a royal priesthood, but you're a holy nation. I'm gonna keep telling you this. God is not concerned. Not really, he's... he's not concerned. That's a horrible way of saying it. All right, rewind. Um, God is more concerned with who you're becoming than who you're dating. He's more concerned with you becoming more like him than you actually finding someone. His standard is not someone else. His standard is his standard, and his standard is holiness. Now, let me just go ahead and tell you what I understand about holiness is that it is hard to be holy, the holy, it's hard for, for you to be holy on your own. You need other people that are surrounding you, that are gonna encourage you, that are gonna equip you, that are gonna challenge you to be everything that God has called you to be. And that's what I love about this verse because he says we have, are a holy nation, which means it's so beautiful that we're not having to do this on our own. 
that we have people and every single time that we come to church and the reason why you should come to church every single week has nothing to do with this message that I'm preaching. It has everything to do with that there's people here that can encourage you, challenge you to become all that Christ is calling you to be. That's what our small groups are about. They're not for us to sit around and just joke around. They're, sit, they're there so that we can encourage and challenge each other saying, hey, listen, I know it's hard. I know that what you're dealing with at school is hard, but keep following Jesus. We have a holy nation. And that includes our friends at Speedway. So it's not an us versus them type mentality. What it means is that we are all a holy nation in Christ Jesus. So we have a new position. Not only do we have a new position, but we have a new purpose. I touched on this a little bit last week, and I'm, gonna t- I'm just going to reiterate what I, what I said because this is so, so important. Latter half, of, laugh, latter half of verse nine. He says, you're a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. Why? Purpose, right here. That you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. What I said last week is so true for us this week. Our purpose here on this earth, we come into a relationship to know God and to make him known. To make God known means that we proclaim the excellencies of him, which again, what I'm saying is that worship isn't just something that we do for 15 minutes on a Wednesday night or a Sunday morning. Worship is everything that we do. Paul would say, whatever you do. He doesn't say what you do. He says, whatever you do which means that everything that you do is worship. You're either worshiping something of this world or you're worshiping God. You have been put on this earth to proclaim the excellencies of God. But why would you do that? Paul gives us every single reason to do that. He says, because he called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. And if God did nothing else for you, that would be enough for you to constantly praise him for what he has done. He doesn't have to get up on the cross and die for us again. He doesn't have to do anything else. He's already done enough. Why? I was dead in my trespasses and the sin and the iniquity in which I lived. But God, in his grace and mercy, He gave me life in Christ Jesus. He called me out of darkness and into his marvelous light. So we have not only a new position, we have a new purpose, but we also have a new privilege. Verse 10, he says, once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had received mercy, but now you have not, but now you have Receive mercy. Again, Old Testament reference here. You have to go read the book of Amos. Go read it sometime. It's a very interesting, jacked up book in the, in the Bible, but it's actually helping us see what he's saying here. In Amos, Amos has a wife. They, they have a baby. And how would you like for this to be your name? He's like, you have a baby, and they call it, translation, not my people. Like, hey, there's not my people. Like, that's like, you were gonna be made fun of at school for that, right? Like, that's exactly what's gonna happen. Well, I think they, they kind of top it all off and they have another baby and then the other baby is called No Mercy. Like, come on, so now we have not my people and no mercy. But what's so amazing about the book of Amos is that he, he comes back and he says that even though you're not my people, I'm gonna make my people, or not, not a people, I'm gonna make not a people, my people. I'm gonna show mercy to no mercy. This is the privilege that you and I have in Christ. Look at the phrase that Peter uses. He says that you were once, you were, once you were not a people. So it isn't like anything else. You just weren't a people, but now you're God's people. There's privilege in that. Once you didn't have mercy, now you have mercy. So, so, Again, I I know I'm digging in a little bit deeper tonight than probably some of you may can comprehend, but here's, here's what I'll say. We look at verses like this and we begin to see who we are in Christ. We begin to see who God says that we are, that we have a new position, that we have a new purpose, that we have a new privilege. 
And why is that important? Again, the narrative that we tell ourselves quite often isn't a very good narrative. The narrative that social media tells us isn't a very good narrative. The narrative that fan, friends and family could tell us is just not the right narrative. And what happens is this, is that we, 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 blo- we block out the word of God because we don't ever go to the word of God. And we buy into the world's narrative and what happens is we begin to believe that narrative and what happens in, as a result, we don't love ourselves. Because we're constantly comparing ourselves to someone down the road. We're constantly thinking that we're not beautiful enough or that we're not good enough or that we gotta do this and we gotta perform and we gotta do all of these different things. We begin to live that lie and we don't love ourselves and then we get into relationships and then we get married and we wonder why we have some stuff that's going on in our marriages. It's because when we were single, we never stopped to learn to let God's love come down to us and let us learn how to love ourselves in light of who Christ says we are. So if we want to win in relationships, people, we got to learn how to see ourselves in light of Christ. So here's my challenge for you. In your chairs tonight, and at Speedway, you have a note card. So when you get to your small group, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. I want you to write this. I want you to write that verse on this card. And not only do I want you to write this, th- those verses on this card, what I want you to do is, is I want you to put it on your mirror, the place where you get dressed at in the morning, that you look at yourself every single day. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to, I want you to read it each and every day. For the next month, I'm just gonna challenge you for the next month to do that. And see what happens as you walk out that door when you begin to read that I'm a a chosen race, a holy nation, I'm a people of his own possession. Watch what happens to your life and how that begins to affect not only yourself but everything around you. Because I just believe that if you would begin to do this, what's gonna happen is is that we're gonna have people in here that are not gonna look at singleness and think it's like some bad thing and something that, oh my goodness, I've gotta find someone to get into a relationship. We're gonna begin to see that Christ is enough for us and who he says we are is more than enough. And so we're going to do, I'm doing this each and every single day. And so we're gonna start together today. I don't want anyone talking at Speedway or here. I want you to stand up. And we're gonna look at this verse together. It's gonna be up on the screen. And I want you to say this. I want you to believe it. We're gonna say it together, all right? And then I'm gonna pray, and then we're we're gonna take some time to worship. So here we go today. You ready? I am a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. Next that I may proclaim the excellencies of him who called me out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Once, that I, oh, no, that's the same one. All right. Maybe we don't have it. Okay, listen, let me just declare this over you. Once I was not a people, but now I'm God's people. Once I had not received mercy, but now I have received mercy. Let's pray. Father, I just ask you right now, I ask you whether, whether we're here in this, in this room at Lenexa or we're at Speedway or maybe we're watching this later, God, I just, I pray that we would let your word define who we are and let the love of who you are towards us and what you say that we are grasp our hearts tonight. I pray, God, that we wouldn't view singleness as this bad thing, but God, we would begin to view singleness as as a purpose, and the purpose is for us to love you above everything, and not only that, but to learn to love ourselves. God, I don't know what the hearts are saying in here tonight. I don't know what thing or narrative's been spoken into some of these people's hearts, but God, I pray the narrative tonight would change. 
I pray for the ones that don't have a relationship with you, God, that tonight in their small groups, they would just take that opportunity to just give their lives to you because of what you have to offer them, that they could be chosen tonight, that they could be a royal priesthood, that they could be a holy nation, that they could be called out of darkness and into your marvelous light, that they could receive your mercy and that they could be called yours today. God, I pray for that. I honestly don't care if they remember anything else I said. I don't really honestly care if they remember me, but God, I want them to remember you tonight. Jesus, may you be famous in our hearts tonight. And Father, I pray, God, as we stand to sing, God, we just lean into the fact that we are completely loved by you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. You guys stand and sing.
guys so so much for being here. I, I wanted to just take a moment. Um, we have Trish here with us tonight. You guys love Trish? Yeah. All right. I love you too. I, I'm so glad that they love you, Trish, because Trish is going to be leading us in worship each and every week from now on. So I love it. She's, I'm excited to have you here, Trish. Thanks so much. Hey, let, let me go ahead and tell you this. She didn't ask me to do this, but if she wanted to like slide me some money later, that's okay too, all right? Like, hey, she, she came in this and she, she's seen what God's doing in your lives and she loves you guys, here for you. Um, she's, like I said, she's leading this in worship, um, but just know that this, this lady right here loves Jesus and loves you guys, um, just like anyone else that's in here, any other adult that loves Jesus and they love you, and there's not a single person that I couldn't stand here and say, I hope that you turn out like them. All right, hey, we're gonna jump into our groups tonight. Hey, don't forget, not next week, the following week, we have flannel and flapjack night. We have Chris Cakes, wear your flannel. We're gonna have a bonfire. Don't forget to invite your friends. All right, go to your groups. Thank you. 